Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we do it this time? Come on, somebody praise his name. Praise is an action word. We came to give God all of the praise and honor. Listen, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. We would like to say good morning to everyone that's here at the Crossing Community Church this morning. Listen, if you are in the sanctuary, we ask that at some point in the service that you pull out your smart devices and you just share this broadcast experience just to get the word out that we're having crazy church right here at 3225 West Orup Drive under the leadership of Pastor Harvey Walker. Can you clap your hands for our online worshipers? <clears throat> Hallelujah. And while you're clapping your hands, did anybody really come to praise him this morning? Did you really come to honor his name and give him the worship and the honor he deserves for keeping you and protecting you all week and sparing your life and covering your household the bible teaches us like this it says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and then into his corpse with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name come on right there can you clap your hands and just show him i'm thankful we came to praise him praise him Oh, praise him, praise him, we call him Jesus, blessed Savior, for he is worthy to be praised. Cause it's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that we have the victory. For it's in the name of Jesus, the precious name of Jesus. Satan, you have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand, stand before us when we, we call on. Anybody ever had to call on? That's great, that great name. We call him Jesus, Jesus, pray, precious Jesus, for we have the so praise him, praise him, did you come to do it, praise him, yeah, Praise Him, Jesus, blessed Savior, for He's worthy to be praised. Come on, cross and help me sing it. Come on, praise Him, praise Him. Come on, praise Him. I hear you. Come on, praise Him. Because he's been so good, praise him. Come on, what is his name? Jesus. Blessed Savior. He is worthy, yes. Worthy to be praised. Come on, verse 2. Come on, let's go. Come on. Say, from the Wonderful counselor. 
You can do better than that. Come on, you can give God praise better than that. We want to welcome all of our online visitors this morning. We want to seriously thank you for tuning in uh, and logging in this morning. Please share this information. Uh, uh, tag and like so that other people can join in. We really appreciate our online community just as well. We appreciate those of us who still come in person. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being God. We thank you for being great. Even in the midst of tragedy sometimes. Even when things in this life take an awkward turn and things happen that we just were not ready for and prepared for. God, we thank you that even in the midst of that, you're still great. You're still God. And you're still reliable. God, it's a lot of people in this room right now. They've had some horrific experiences already this year, but God, we still trust you and we still believe that you are our keeper, that you are our strong tower, and that you will keep our minds and our hearts in perfect peace. Now, God, give us strength this morning. Give us fortitude this morning. Help us to persevere and to push forward this morning, trusting you every single step of the way. God, unleash your spirit in this place today. Release a word in this place that will change us from the inside out. God, we trust you. God, we honor you. God, we love you. God, we acknowledge you. God, we adore you. God, we celebrate you. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. God, we love you. God, we honor you. We worship and adore you. With every breath in our body, we'll worship and adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, somebody shout any day now. Come on, I hear you. Say it one more time. Just say it one more time. Say any day now. I don't know how. I don't know where to look for it. But I sense that any day now. God is going to show up and do what he said he'll do for me. Come on, somebody shout for me. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes, Lord. I'm expecting my miracle any day now, any day now. I'm expecting my miracle any day now, any day now. I shall have everything that I need any day now, any day now. By faith, I know that it's coming to me.
use me. He's faithful to perform it. He's not a man that he shall lie. Any day now. Any day now. Oh, I'm expecting my miracle. Any day now. Yes, I am. God is going to do what he said he'll do. what you started God you have never felt and you won't start with me present in every step patient in every heartache God you have never felt me and you won't start with me if you said it we believe it if you said it if you said it, we believe it. If you said it, oh, if you said it, we believe it. If you said it, you gotta speak it over your own life. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, come on, lift that up in unison. You say it. If you said we believe. If you said it, come on, if you said that I'm healed, I'm healed. Wonder, 
One more time, we're moving. See miracles, signs, signs. wonders. wonders. Oh my Lord, miracles, signs, wonders, 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 wonders. 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 I still believe wonders. that you can do it. Wonders. wonders. I still believe. Yes, sir. I still believe. Yeah. I still believe. Yeah. I still believe. Yeah. We have this confidence. Yeah. You will finish what you started. God, you have never felt. And you won't start with me, so I'm expecting my miracles any day now, any day now. Last time, every believer lift it up and say, I'm expecting my miracles any day now. Any any day now, any day now, one last time, I, 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 I'm expecting my miracle. Yeah. Any day now, any day now, last time every believer, any day now. Come on, clap your hands like you already got it. Hallelujah. Come on, I said clap your hands like you already got it. Hallelujah. The sky is the limit to what I can have. Somebody say, just believe and receive it. I know that God will perform it today. Hey, just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Come on, somebody shout today, 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 today. I ain't got to wait till tomorrow. He can do it today. Right here in this worship encounter, he can do it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anybody came to get a miracle today? Anybody looking for one today? Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them you're in the right place at the right time here at the Crossing Church Houston. Hallelujah. God is doing a miracle working thing here on today in our worship encounter. We're so glad that you can be a part of this worship encounter. We want to pause for just a quick second to uh, recognize all of our visitors that are here with us on today. Amen. If you're watching online, welcome to the Crossing Church Houston. Amen. Put I'm a visit in the comment section and all of our members that are watching online please love like and comment under the comment to ensure that all of our online members feel at home today our online visitors rather feel at home today I want you to do me a favor visitors that are watching if you could please 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 pay attention to your Facebook messenger and those that are watching on YouTube land if you could just pay attention to your inbox as well amen someone from our, from our administration team will be giving you more insight on our church campus and all of the great communications we have to kick off this year 2024 and we're so glad that you can be a part of this worship encounter and journey with us amen god bless you come on make some noise for all of our online visitors <laughs> hallelujah and returning members we're so glad to see you online as well amen if you're here in the sanctuary i don't want to embarrass you in any way i don't want you to say anything to me if you are visiting i just want to see who you are and recognize you at this time by just wave of a hand just wave back at me any visitors today just wave any visitors amen hallelujah come on we're all family today come on can we give ourselves a hand so glad to see it see all of you can you just turn around do a little 360 if you can and just wave at somebody tell them i'm so glad to see you come on in the front of you behind you on the side of you so glad to see all of you today amen anybody ready for a fresh word today come on somebody clap your hands in response to that hallelujah we're so glad for those that are going to bring the word today amen but before we do that there's another song that just says any day now god is going to do everything that he said he's going to do we just believe in that for 2024 come on give our praise team a hand as they come do me a favor shout any day now Oh, come on, that was weak. Do it again any day now. Come on, clap your hands with me. Right into it, y'all. Help me sing it. Say, any day now. Come on. Any day now. God will do what he said. I need 
some help. Come on, clap your hands. Come on.
gonna perform that miracle. Say he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Come on, break that music. Let me hear everybody shout it. Come on. He's gonna do it. Find you one more person and tell them this, say, neighbor, I don't know when, I don't know why, and I don't know how, but 
any day now, God is going to do it. Now I need somebody to lose their mind for the next 12 seconds and give our God glory because you know any day now, he's showing up and he's showing up. spirit and I know that all things work together for my good and I know that all things work together for my can y'all help me and I know that all things work together for my good and I know that all things work together for my good and I know all things work for my good, so that I know, and I know that all things work together for my good. Ooh, that's a lot of hands. And I know that all things work together for my good. So that I know, and I know that all things work together for my good. Everybody, clap your
Samuels. First Samuel 16 is where we're going. Yay. Everybody, we have. We have the victory. Now somebody give our God glory right there. Come on, I said give our God glory right there. If you know that you already have the victory. First Samuel chapter 16 is where we're going. Yeah, but I'm just decreeing and declaring that I already have the victory. Yes, Lord. He's already given it to me. First Samuel chapter 16 is where we're going. When you got it, shout, I got it. Come on, when you got it, shout, I got it. This is what it says. It said, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him as king over Israel. He says, fill your horn with oil and be on your way I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem I have chosen one of his sons to be king but Samuel said how can I go if Saul hears about it he will kill me the Lord said take a heifer with you and say I have come to sacrifice to the Lord invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do you are to anoint for me the one that I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Last words, he says, Samuel replied, yes, in peace I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Uh, our, our, our key is found in the first scripture. I'm just going to give it to you one more time. Then the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him to be king over Israel? Uh, for the next 22 minutes, I want to lift this thought to you. Look to your neighbor, say, neighbor, your next is right now. Take your seats in a holy place. Um, I, I really don't have to do much work in here today. Uh, the Lord has already moved. He's done what he wanted to do. And uh, if you missed 8 o'clock service, my apology to you. But pastor preached an amazing message at our 8 o'clock service. Um, it was so amazing that I didn't know that he was going to be so much in the vein of what God had given me because pastor preached from Habakkuk chapter one and he talked about having victory in your valleys. And that was a question that Habakkuk was asking God. He said, God, how long? Will you allow me to go through the things that I'm going through? How long will you allow destruction to hit the land? And so I don't even have to bore you with all of the details because Pastor already provided all the information. But I have a question for somebody in here today. How long? It's one thing, hear this, when you are asking God how long, but it's another thing in 1 Samuel 16 when God is asking you how long. Uh -huh. See, some of you don't want to talk to me right there for real because here is the forensic investigation of what you are currently dealing with right now. You think that you've been waiting on God. Matter of fact, you've told all your co-workers at work that. You told everybody in your family when they ask you, what are you doing next? And, and what are you looking forward to? You say words like this, child, I'm just waiting on the Lord. And while it sounds holy and it sounds sanctified with the words from our lips deep within our heart, we don't really know what that means because if truth be told, there are some of us who say we have been waiting on God for a long time. But can I help somebody in here today? What if I told you that you are no longer waiting on God? God was waiting on you. 
Yeah, you see how limited the hand claps are right there? You, you, you see how quiet and how tight it gets right there? Because the reality of your situation is that it is not going to change until you dedicate yourself to doing something differently. And there are some of us that wants God to do a new thing. There are some of us that wants God to open new doors, but we're not willing to change our mindset. We're not willing to change our movement. And we're definitely not willing to change our prayer and our praise life. Which means that sometimes what you think you're waiting on is actually waiting on you. Y'all, y'all, I, I got to help you with this today because this is one of my favorite Bible passages uh, because of the way that God starts off talking. Can, can, I, can I talk to y'all for just a few moments? Y'all don't mind. I got some real people in the room. Uh, because when God talked to me, like he don't talk to me in that bill paying voice. Y'all know the bill paying voice. When you got to pay bills, you turn on the other voice. You, you don't put your Hiram Clark voice on when you're paying bills. Talk to me for real. Uh-huh. You put on your good morning. Hey, how, how are you? When God talked to me, he talked to me straight up. He'd be like, hey, be quiet. You ready for this? You know you got the Holy Ghost when he tells you, hey, apologize. Uh-huh. And so God begins to talk to Samuel in this scripture. And when he begins to talk to Samuel, the first thing he asks him is how long? But before we go there, can I walk you through the flip side of that? Because is there anybody in the room that's been asking God the same question that he's asking you? You've been asking God, God, how long am I going to have to deal with this depression? God, how long am I going to have to deal with this stress? God, how long am I have to deal with this no good, nappy-headed joker? God, how long am I going to have to stay at this raggedy job that's really not making all my ends meet? God, how long do I have to put up with these fake family members and friends? And we ask God all the time, how long? As to say, if he gives us the timeline, we would serve him better. But can I lift this for you? Faith is when you can do it and not know how long you're going to be in it. Because if you knew, can, all right, all right, look this way. If you knew how long you had to live, if God told you you have 30 more days to live, for 29 of them days, you're going to do whatever you want to do. You're going to hit up Kashada. You're going to fly to Vegas. Talk to me for real. You, you, you're going to indulge in some beverages that you thought you was over. You're going to travel through a couple places that you said you were delivered from. And then on that last day, you're going to be in the church. Oh, I lift my hands in total. Yeah, yeah, we, we do that. Why? Because we wait to the last minute when we are looking forward to something. But God is looking for those of us in the building today that says you don't have to have a time limit. Come on. You don't have to have an expiration date. You don't need any of those things. I want to know, can you serve me when you can't see your way out? I want to know, can you trust me when you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel? God is looking for those of us us that can walk with him in faith even through what we don't know so he asked this question he says how long you ready are you going to mourn over Saul can you nudge your neighbor that went to sleep because the praise break is over and tell him to say neighbor God didn't say you couldn't cry but he's saying how long are you going to cry over that I love a God like this, Bishop Utley. Here's why I love a God like this, because God understands that we have emotion. God understands that we go through certain things. So he didn't tell us that we could not cry. Matter of fact, if you call David, David would say that weeping may endure for a night, but, but joy comes in the morning. Matter of fact, if you leave David and you go to John in the book of Revelation, he told us that he would wipe every one of our our tears away y'all know that scripture which means that God will allow you to cry but after you get through crying you're going to have to learn how to pick yourself up and keep going he said you could cry it is, it is an exhausted human emotion but some of us cry and quit and God says I can't allow you to quit you ready? Here, go, here, goes, here goes the main thing. Here, here's the main thing. Say, somebody say the main thing. 
Here's the main thing. He says, how long are you going to mourn over Saul? You ready for this? Knowing that I've rejected him. All right. Can we do this? We, we can do it. All right, don't say we can do it and then you're going to roll your eyes at me after I get through saying it. All right. But have you ever held on to something that God told you to let go of because of how pleasurable it was in the moment? Ooh, we lying in church. The devil is a whole lie. I mean, have you ever heard the voice of God say, leave that alone? Let's go a little deeper. Leave them alone. But because of how it felt in the moment, you held on to it. And here's for some real people in the room that will testify. After you held on to it, when God told you to let go of it, it became harder. It became unbearable. And you found yourself in some dangerous situations because you disobeyed God. So my question for you today is this right here. How long are you going to hold on to a dead thing? Knowing that God is trying to do a new thing. And many of us say, God, if you show me what's for me. If you show me what's next. If you show me what's coming. If you show me the greater, then I will let go of this thing. But God said, I need to see if I can trust you before I show you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Look, look down your road say, neighbor, stop. Being an opportunist. You know what an opportunist is? Let me help you. An opportunist is an individual, a person who looks for the next best thing. They're never really committed to one thing or one work. They are only committing to work their way up to something else. Uh, I know we don't have that at this church, but, but at some churches you have to be careful because people operate in the spirit of the opportunist. Uh -huh. They only want to serve to see how close they can sit. They only want to serve to see if they can get the microphone. They only want to serve if they can get their name on signs around here. But can I help somebody in here today? Baby, if they never call your name, if they never acknowledge you, if they never give you a microphone and let you preach, pray, you better know that God is pleased with you. Why? Because your service is unto him and not to another man or a woman. And God is saying in this season, he is exposing opportunists that will not trust him unless he gives treasure in their hand. He's not looking for another opportunist. So Samuel is struggling with this fact. He's struggling with the fact that what was once beneficial to me in the last season no longer serves me purpose in this season. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever been in a place to where the relationship was going good, the job was going good, the business was going good, the friendship was going good? It was serving a purpose, but then it seemed like out of nowhere that thing turned. And you didn't know how to adjust, you didn't know how to pivot. So what you did, because um, you are one of those passive-aggressive people, you just played it. You just played it cool and allowed it to get worse. So he's struggling with the fact that how could God tell me this is good for me yesterday, but say it's bad for me today. I want to lift this one word for you and then I'll be through, okay? Everybody shout this word after me. Shout expired. The word expired means it's no longer good. Uh, let's make it real. Let's make it real practical. I don't even have to get mystical and deep and spooky and all of that. Let, let's let's talk for real. There, there are some of you right now that when you go home and open your refrigerator, there are some things in there that are. Y'all still gonna lie in church? And, and, and some of you get mad at your children because you taught them how to read. And then they go in the refrigerator and be like, oh, mama, th this say 109-2023.
B baby, if you freeze it, it'll still be good. It'll be all right. Just let it thaw out. It, that's what's wrong with y'all kids today. Y'all ain't never had to struggle. No, the problem is you don't know how to get rid of expired things. And what I found out is that if you consume an expired thing, then you run the risk of contaminating poison and toxing yourself. And there are many of us right now that are poisoned with the preach word. We're poisoned in our praise life. We're poisoned in our prayer life. Why? Because we keep holding on to an expired thing. Throw it away. It's old. No, you can actually buy buttermilk. You don't have to let the milk go sour. To, to, all right. They sell it in the store. But when you hold on to an expired thing, not only, hear this, do you run the risk of poisoning or be getting food poisoning or anything like that, but hear this, for, for three people that have talked to me for real, when you hold on to the expired thing, you cannot allow room for the new thing to come in yet. So he tells Samuel, he says, get up from this place. Leave Saul behind. Leave that place behind. Hear this, because I've already got the replacement lined up for you. And many of us cannot get to the thing that God wants us to have because we haven't been willing to let the old thing go. Y'all, my wife sitting right there. I thought she was the most bougie individual that I had ever met. Here's why, because we went to a restaurant um, and I ordered a chicken and a seafood platter. And, and this is what she told the people. She said, um, make sure that when you cook his food, you cook it in two different oils. When you fry it, fry it in two different oils. I'm sitting looking at her across the table like, first of all, what are you talking about? Number two, lead this waitress alone because I do not want nobody spitting in my food. Lead this girl alone. So I asked her, I said, why? Why did you say that? She says, because they are two different type of meats. And when they are cooked together in the same grease, one takes away from the other. And because they are two different type of meats cooked in the same thing, what they call it is cross-contamination. Come here. Because many of us are in a state of cross-contamination because we are believing God for a new thing, but we are not willing to let go of the old mindset, the old bad habits, the old things that we are on. And I don't know about y'all. I don't want to eat chicken tenders and it tastes like shrimp. I don't want to eat chicken tenders and it tastes like fish. I want something that tastes like what it's supposed to taste like. And there are many of us right now that can't see the move of God because we're cooking it all grease no look down your road tell them to say neighbor find you some new oil stop cooking with that old stuff yeah the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 11 the first two words is this you ready for this i need you to shout these words after me hebrews 11 and 1 it says now faith it says now faith which means this, there was a then faith and then there is a now faith. Now means that you've switched over to what was to now what is. Now means that you've gone from an old thing unto a new thing. Now means that you've left the old thing behind and you are grabbing for to the thing that God wants to do. I wonder is there anybody that says God give me some now. Give me some, give me some now faith. All right? Do this for me. The, the, just find somebody that's the closest to you and grab their hand. Grab their hand real quick. All right? Do this for me. Tell them this. Say, this connection is proof that COVID didn't kill you. They missed it. Grab somebody else's hand and tell them this. Say, neighbor, this connection is proof that COVID didn't kill you. Which means this, that my faith is not longer on the thing that I was scared of. But I'm here today in the land of the living so I can grab a new set of 
of faith that said if God brought us out of the pandemic, he can bring us into a prosperous place. I'm no longer operating in fear. I'm no longer operating in shame. But God, give me some now faith. I don't have to be scared to touch anybody because he told me by his stripes we are already healed. I don't have to be afraid when somebody sneezes. I can say bless you and baby I mean it with everything in me. Is there anybody in this place today that says God upgrade my faith? Sick of y'all. I'll get on my nerves. We'll shout over a new thing and then go home and say, Lord, ha, 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 ha. I don't know about it. We'll come in here, lift holy hands and say, next is now. But still won't go home and kick that joker out your bed. I'm sick of us. That you've done everything else out of the pandemic. You've made babies since the pandemic. You've been in the club since the pandemic. You've been to the mall since the pandemic. And we're walking the church house, the place of freedom, and won't even hug nobody because you're scared that you might not get sick. The devil is allowed. The last time I heard, he said that my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. So whatever sickness wants to hit this room, baby, when we begin to pray, every sickness has to flee. When we begin to call on the name of God, everything that we need, it has to line up in our pay. Is there anybody that says next is? So he tells him, get up, leave that place. You ready? Here goes your one shout. Because I'm not a hooper, but I will give you one shout, okay? Because I know some of y'all will say, he ain't preach if you don't shout. Here's your one shout. He says, I've already selected the next king. Here's why you didn't shout. Because you thought that the choice was yours. You thought you were going to have to figure it out. You thought you were going to have to stay up all night long worrying and praying about it. But God says when you leave that place, Lord God, the next thing I have for you is already provided. He says the only thing I need you to do is show up because when you show up, it is already there. When you make your way there, it will be waiting on you. Is there anybody that says, God, I'm ready to walk into my now. Last thing, I'm through. I'm literally through. You can make your way here. I'm through. Y'all, uh, I, I got a Facebook reminder today. And y'all know sometimes Facebook be messy. So you got to be careful with them Facebook memories. Because sometimes it'll pull up like pictures of people you ain't talked to in a long time. And then you got to like delete it and do all that stuff. But y'all, today Facebook was real prophetic. It was real prophetic in, in, in my memories today. Um, it reminded me of four years ago uh, that one of our ministry partners in New Zealand, they had a situation going on. Um, and anybody that, well, some of you know, some of you don't, me and my wife, we partner with people across the world to feed refugees, to provide clothing, food, shelter, and all of that to sick people who are living in third world countries. But so they had a project in New Zealand that they were trying to get done. Um, and it was one of those things that was time sensitive. Y'all ever been through that? Like where the people tell you if you don't pay the bill by this certain time or if you don't have to come up with the money by this, you'll lose the entire thing. Okay, I'm I, I'm act like I'm not preaching on West Orm since y'all don't want to be real in here today. Because uh, there's some of us right now that's in here and needed an extension on top of an extension on top of an extension on top of an extension. And even the date they told you they was going to cut your lights off, God kept them on. And there's some of you right now that's praying that God keep it on through the winter storm. And this is what I heard him say. He said, lo, I'll be with you always. So I don't have to be in fear about my finances because my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I'm just telling you that your Lord, your God is a provider. So watch what happens. They had a situation going 
going on. And they said, Pastor BJ, we, we really need some help, um, and, and it cannot wait. So what we did, we got with all of our partners here locally, and we began to get some funds together and all of those things. I ain't going to bore you with the whole story. I'll just cut across the field right here because Facebook reminded me prophetically about what God would do. Uh, we gathered all of this money, and then I told them, oh, give me the account number. I'm about to wire it to you. That's why I said I'm going to wire it to you uh, right now. When I sent the wire, y'all, why I get a notification from my bank account, and my bank account says that the funds won't be available until tomorrow. But they needed the money today. So I said, Lord Jesus, oh my God, Lord, I need you to work something out. The email says that the funds won't be available until tomorrow. So you know I have to do that pastor phone call where unfortunately we tried, but it looked like it's not going to go through. I call him. I call Pastor Josh in New Zealand. I say, Pastor Josh, hey, I got some bad news. He's screaming and yelling on the phone, like yelling, going berserk. I'm like, hey, what's, what's happening? What's going on? He's like yelling, y'all, screaming. I say, hey, what's going on? I say, hey, I got some bad news. I said, I sent the money, but they said that it's not going to be available until tomorrow. And I know y'all got some stuff to get done today. He says, no, 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 Pastor. No, 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 Pastor. No, Pastor, Pastor. He says, you don't understand, Pastor. He said, New Zealand is 12 hours ahead of where you are. Can I talk to y'all because they don't want to talk to me? He said, where you are, New Zealand is 12 hours ahead. Which means that if it's 11.59 p.m. in Houston, it's 11.59 a.m. the next day in New Zealand. I just came to tell somebody today that I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds my future. And God told me that the future looks better than right now. Is there anybody that knows he's the same God? Yesterday, today, and forevermore. Can somebody give God glory for their next? Come on, give him glory for your next. Don't stop giving glory for your next. Your next is right now. Your next is right now. Your next is right now. You ought to say it to yourself until you're convinced of it. My next is right now. My next is right now. My next is right now. I'm standing in my next right now. I'm standing in my next right now. This is my praise for my next that I'm standing in right now. This is how I looked worshiping in my next right now. My next is right now. It's right now. It's right now. It's right now. It's here. It's right now. It's already done. It's already done. Everything God promised. Oh, it's already done. It's right now. It's already done. It's right now. It's already done. Everything God promised is already, already done. Already done. It takes faith to believe and to receive it takes an ear to hear it but it takes faith to receive that my next is right now you don't have to receive that you got an option but if you want it well then receive it that my next is right now. I'm standing in it. I'm standing in it right now. I'm standing in the next best version of me. I'm already standing in it. I'm standing in my next season of prosperity. I'm standing in it. 
I'm standing in my next moment of strength. I'm standing in it. While experiencing this, I'm still standing in it. Don't let the situation or the circumstance convince you that you are not standing in your next. I don't care how bad it is. You still stand it in your next. If you're in this place and you've never received and or accepted the Lord Christ Jesus as your Savior, I give you an opportunity to do so now. According to the Bible in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it says, If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Christ Jesus is the Son of God and that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall and you will be saved. I guess I should put it like this. The doors of the church are open, and so is the altar. God wants to have a relationship with you, and that relationship starts with the relationship with Christ Jesus. It's not just accepting Jesus as your Savior, but also allowing him to lord over your life. And if you never made that decision, I would encourage you. I can't make you can't force you I would encourage you to stand to your feet and let's take care of that business once and for all second appeal if you're in this place and you say you know what I've been looking for a place to connect to I've been looking for a place to worship it's not just a church home because that's not just what this place is this place is the bridge to life with a crossing and if you've been looking for a place to connect to I have great news for you you're already here this is an amazing place this is the perfect place for imperfect people this is an amazing place for us to grow to learn and to develop in our faith and if you would like to partner become a partner and join come on down here we're better together and we've been waiting on you this entire time. Last appeal. If you say, Pastor, listen, I just really need someone to join their faith with mine. Going through a few situations, I'm expecting God to do some things. And I know God, his ability. I've been questioning his willingness. And if someone would just join and connect their faith with mine, and just offer up a word of prayer, I would appreciate it. If that's you, come on down. We're not going to take all day to do this, but come on down. That's what we'll do. We'll connect our faith with yours, and we'll offer up a word of prayer. Nobody knows what you've gone through before you walk through those doors. Don't nobody know how your life situation looks, and nobody's here to judge you. Amen. And we say God is able to just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Come on. We trust you, God. We don't have to spend all day, but here's what I encourage you to do. Make your moves. Because what you came in here to get is available for you. Make your move. We cry. Because we're able, we come because he's oh, able. Oh, 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 he's able. Yeah. Oh, 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 he's able. All right. God is able to do just what he said he would do. 
God, I thank you for everybody who came to this altar. They didn't come to me because I'm not able. They came to this altar, God, because you're able. And if and since you're able, whatever this young man stands in need of, God, I pray that you meet it. Whatever this young lady stands in need of, God, I thank you that you're meeting it. Father, we have praised over what you're doing. And now we're worshiping that it's already done. Father, I thank you that they're already standing in their next. I join, we join, and we connect our faith with our brothers and our sisters this morning, trusting and believing, God, that it's already done. You are going to do everything that you promised you would do. You are the, okay, you are the promise keeper. One thing you cannot do, you cannot lie, and you cannot fail. And God, we thank you this morning. I thank you for those who have met you here at this altar that you're going to fulfill every promise that you made to them. Father, I thank you now. Where there was a lack of strength, you're sending it. It's already here. Where there was a lack of power, it's already here. Where there was a lack of confidence, it's already here. I thank you, God, even if their past was broken. Father, I thank you that they'll no longer be a victim to their past. More than a conqueror, better than a survivor. God, I trust you, I thank you, and I love you, and I honor you. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives right now. Thank you, God, that they're standing in their necks right now. Thank you, God, that you're moving on their behalf right now. Thank you, God, that you're turning it and shifting it and moving it right now. Thank you, God, that it ain't about the circumstance. It's about them. God, I thank you for what you're doing in their life right now. And thank you that you've kept your hand on them. That even when the enemy wanted to kill them and take them out, God, I thank you that you kept your hand on them. Now we cover them in prayer and we join our faith with theirs because we know that you are able and we thank you, God, that you're doing it right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I ask it all. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate God in here. Don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God cause he won't give up for you. Oh, don't Listen, it's giving time. Amen. It's giving time. For those of you that are watching online, all the ways that you can give are going to show up on your screen. Uh, we have text to give. We have Cash App. We have Zelle. Here at the Crossing Community Church, Houston, here's, here's what we do. We don't pay tithe, but rather we return it. We cannot pay God something that already belongs to him. So we return the tithe to the Lord in obedience. Amen. We return the tithe to the Lord in obedience. If I give you something, then you don't pay it back. You just return it because it's mine. I gave it to you. That's what we do with our tithe. We return it to the Lord. A tithe is a tenth. It's a dime out of every dollar. We don't just give. We actually sow an offering because we believe that this is amazing ground to sow into. We have online giving. We have text to give. We have cash app and we have Zelle. It is there on your screen. If you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand. If you need to use your check card, a debit card, a credit card, or whatever it may be, you can see those amazing people in the very back of the sanctuary they will handle that business for you but we are cheerful and excited givers amen amen we are cheerful and excited givers amen and we are a 100 percent tithing church that was quiet we are a 100 percent tithing church okay amen yeah. get a lot of amens on that one if we're ready to give Last but not least, 
you also have an opportunity to sow a gift of love into our pastor. Our pastor does an amazing job at not only being the shepherd over our souls that God has entrusted to him, but just making sure that things happen the way that they're supposed to happen in ministry. He's the maintenance man. He's the errand runner. He does this and he does that until he have to keep going to therapy and getting his leg checked out and all of this. He just won't stop, won't sit down, won't relax. But he does a lot of the stuff behind the scene. But most of all, he labors before the Lord to give us a life-changing word. Amen. On a weekly basis. Amen. Amen. He labors before the Lord. And you have an opportunity, I take it every week, you have an opportunity to sow a gift of love into him just to honor him. Because I believe that he's worth honoring. First lady is worth honoring. So we're ready to give. Are we ready to give? Repeat after me. Say miracle money. You ain't say it right. Say miracle money. Unexpected income. Wealth transfer. Supernatural debt elimination. Settlements will be settled in my favor. These are the statements that we make on a weekly basis because we believe and we know that when we are obedient to God that he will cause these things to happen in and on our life. Stand to your feet and come on and bring your gifts at this time. And I'm asking that you return back to your seats. I'm going to give us a few announcements and then we're going to be out of here. everyone had an opportunity yeah amen and amen and amen again want to thank you for your obedient your continued obedience and consistency in the area of giving stretch before you move it stretch your hands towards those gifts god we thank you continue to give seed to the sower continue to give seed to the sower give territory and land to the sower so that they will always have a place to sow god we thank you for those who had it and even those who had it not to give Father, we honor you for those who are obedient to your word in the returning of the tithe and the releasing of an offering, even sowing a gift of love into the man of God. Father, we honor them for honoring you. Now, God, take these treasures and use it to accomplish your kingdom agenda for the Crossing Church Houston. We trust you with our time, talent, and our treasure. In Jesus' name, amen. Few announcements, very few. All services for the week are canceled. No Tuesday, no Wednesday, no Thursday. Everything has been canceled. We are going to have some, we're not certain what kind of weather we're going to have, but we know it's going to be something. A snap, inclement, it's going to be something. Um, so therefore, we have canceled all things that's going on during the week here at the Crossing Community Church. The service that Pastor was supposed to be preaching at on January the 18th, it's been changed to the 25th. Of January, so please make the adjustments to your calendar. Pastor has a preaching had a preaching engagement on the 18th, and that has been changed to the 25th. He's going to be at Living Faith Baptist Church at 4310 Holloway for Pastor Ricky King. That's on the 25th of January. The Friday Women Connection thing has been canceled. Um, and here's what we need to do: we need to keep a lot of our members lifted up in prayer, including our very own uh, first family who. They've experienced some loss, a lot of loss here in their family 
recently. We want to pray for Sister Robert Franklin and the passing of Sister Franklin's mother. We want to pray for Sister Darden and the passing of her sister-in-law. We want to pray for Pastor Walker and his family for the loss that they have uh, suffered. Uh, the homegoing services for Justin Walker, the son of Deacon James C. Walker. Uh, it's January the 20th, 2024. The time is 10 a.m. and then for the viewing and then the service is going to start at 11 a.m. and it's at God's Way Church uh, in Sunnyside, Texas. Uh, Jameson Ethel, St. Holloway Missionary Baptist Church. That's another one? Okay. Um, in Navasota, the time is Sunday, January the 14th. Um, we're not rushing the service today, but Pastor, they have to get out of here because they have a funeral that they have to attend. Um, and truthfully, I wouldn't have came to church if I had a funeral to attend, but it shows your faithfulness to being here. If I wouldn't have come. I'm just, okay, I'd have called him and said, I'm not going to make it. But he's here. We thank God. Uh, that he's here. So they have to get to Navasota for a funeral that's going to start at 2.30. Uh, Miss Deborah Payne, crossing member. Um, the place is the Crossing Community Church, and that service is going to be January the 20th um, at 2 to 3.30. Um, listen, let's keep our... I just talked to my sister here who just lost her grandson. Yep, the year just started, and all this tragedy. So let's pray for our brothers and sisters and their family just like it's ours. Just like this tragedy, this loss has hit our family. Let's pray that earnestly. Stand to your feet. It's not easy losing. Okay. We're human. We have feelings. We have emotions. And sometimes people die that we still need. Right my Lord that we still need in our life and they're gone and that's a hard adjustment to make to have to create a new normal when you're so used to the normal that you've always had I don't care how spiritual you are how anointed you are how many tongues you can speak in and whether or not you can translate Greek to Hebrew and Hebrew to Aramaic it's hard losing it's hard and God knows it that's why he said, I'll be a present help in your time of need. Dear Heavenly Father, every family and person in this building who has suffered loss, Father, we pray strength now back to the places where there's now weakness. God, we pray peace even where there's no understanding. And God, we thank you for being their God. Not only the God of our good, but the God of when things go bad as well. Father, they need you. And I thank you that when they need you, you show up and you are there to supply and meet their needs. Now, all of these gaping holes that have been left in all of these families, Father, I thank you now that you are filling those places with joy with peace and with love as they mourn and grieve and deal with the current heartbreak. God, give us traveling grace as we leave this place, but never your presence. We ask that the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, that it will rest rule and abide with us from this day forward. God, we thank you that we are able to stand and declare that our next is now. God, we thank you that we are able to stand and declare that our next is now. In Jesus' name I pray. Let the people of God say, now hug somebody and tell them, your next is right now. You are dismissed.